much spring out there, early, early morning spring today. So, hey. All right. Um, we have a lot to do this morning. A little bit later on, we're going to uh, invite someone into our congregation as a new member a little bit later. Um, so, we look forward to that. Announcements this morning. Um, you will be getting a new newsletter for March coming soon. Uh, though Patty has not yet started helping me get it I'm sure that will be coming. It's, it's this week. All right. Well, a lot of things will be happening. When you get your newsletter, be very mindful of all the announcements, um, things, events, wonderful things coming up. Uh, so one thing we want to announce this morning, so be mindful of a couple of things. Confirmation class. Um, confirmation class will begin on March 8th. Okay? Confirmation class will begin on March the 8th. We'll set a time later on. We're going to um, cover a lot of ground quickly and have confirmation Sunday on March 29th as of now. So that gets us off of Palm Sunday. We don't have to do it on that day. If um, you're age 11, going on 12, or older, uh, you're welcome to take confirmation class. Even if you've already taken it and you want to freshen up on um, our understanding of our United Methodist beliefs and things of that nature, we invite you to take confirmation class. Okay, so again, um, anyone can take it from age 11 to 12 onward. And um, again, even if you've already had it, maybe not had it for a long while, want to know more about the United Methodist Church and, uh, and our faith. Disciple 1, that, correct me if I'm wrong, Eva, we're meeting 4.30 Tuesday night. Okay, Disciple 1, 4.30 Tuesday night. Because um, of my schedule, we were, I haven't asked the disciple folks to be really flexible in the next few months. All right, I will be going to cabinet meeting Wednesday through Friday. Um, so, but if you need me, I am still available. Bishop has made that clear that even though I'm with him, I'm still your pastor. So please contact me um, if you need me for anything, even though I'm at those meetings. Okay, so we'll meet this Wednesday through Friday. But that, is, but that being said, please know uh, with the bulletins on each side, the bulletins are kind of printed a handout um, for you to read concerning your um, new pastor who will be officially um, your pastor on July 1st. Um, I know he has received many uh, messages already in his wife and, um, and Valentine's cards, Valerie. I didn't get any, by the way. Oh, wait. <laughs> I had to say it, but I had to say it. Did not, but anyhow, that's, that's, but I'm glad you're welcoming him um, and um, his wife, Beth, and their son, Brody. Continue doing so because it certainly helps move, um, go a lot smoother if you know ahead of time that folks are um, ready to welcome you. And, um, and we'll say more about that on the, uh, the nearer to that. I looked at the calendar, Paula, the other day, just so you'll know. All right? Um, my last Sunday here will be June 21st. All right, that's my last Sunday. So it'll be our, our last time together. Um, and then um, we'll, get, we'll, we'll, we'll work together to make this a very smooth transition. I said that, Paul, so we can have the contract ready to sign, but I can't say anything about it. You have sermons or anything like that, all right? Okay, so please get one of those handouts. It tells um, a lot about Nathan and his family, um, and so if you'll read us more, we'll read more about that. Um, are there other announcements this morning? Eva. And I just wanted to remind everybody that Thursday the 20th is the United Methodist Women meeting at 6 o'clock, and it's going to be a special meeting that honors Miss Lyons and Barbara. So we encourage all women to come out, even if you don't normally um, get to make it, because I know everybody has busy schedules, but we would really like to have as many people there to help honor these wonderful women. What time? Six o'clock on Thursday the 20th. Thursday the 20th, all women invited to come out for the United Methodist Women. Lindsay? Um, 
we're in the beginning stages for Vacation Bible School this year. The theme's going to be Heroes Unmasked. Um, the date has been changed to June 15th. Any volunteers will be appreciated. Um, there's a sign-up sheet out in the hallway here. And also, we're going to serve dinner before, so any donations or help in the kitchen will be appreciated as well. Okay. So we need all kinds of help for Vacation Bible School. Lindsay, what's the time for Bible School? Oh, I don't know exactly, just evening. Probably five to eight. That may change a little. We'll tweet that as we yeah. go and feed it and let you know officially. Are there other announcements this morning? All right. Take a moment to read those if you may not yet have been able to say hi.
for the law. <laughs> but this is how it's true, Lord Jesus, for me. As soon as you can we pray. Amen. Before we sing, I'd like to invite you to this be ready to come on Maria. Come and join me up front. We invite anyone who would like to join uh, Leah up here this morning. Join us. This is
walk in the way that leads to life. Now, let us join together once again as we profess the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe?
invite all the children to come and join the shells. Good morning. How are you guys? I feel great this morning. I have a hard act to follow up for last week in the test. Don't you agree? So I was like, you right after Greg in heaven? Oh my gosh. Well, I was thinking today about Presence Day. You guys know what Presence Day is? No? The day we celebrate George Washington and Abraham Lincoln, their birthday. And I'm going to talk about some here. Have you ever told a lie before? To get out of trouble. So have you ever told a lie to get out of trouble? What did you say, Alan? Wait the fifth? Have you ever told a lie to get out of trouble? I know I have growing up. I see some people agreeing with me, right? Well, is it okay to tell a lie? <coughs> right? Why are there some reasons why people would not tell the truth? Why are there other reasons why people would not want to tell the truth? They don't want to get in trouble. What else? Have you ever lied to your parents about a bad grade? No? Never got a bad grade in your life? I don't know those two boys back there, though. Or those three boys. I know them too well. What? Are you telling on your brothers? Okay. <laughs> Have you ever hit a paper that had a bad grade on it before? No? Maybe? <laughs> Did you hide it in your backpack? Maybe? <laughs> so now I know you need to check your backpack every day. Okay. Is it okay to hide something and, and not tell the truth? No, is it the same thing as hiding something and not telling the truth? It's not the same thing. If I hide something and I don't tell the truth, that's that the same thing. You don't think so? I don't know. That's a hard one to think about, isn't it? They are. Okay. Right. When you hide something, you don't tell the truth, right? You don't want to do that. Have you ever heard about George Washington and the cherry tree? You know, he chopped down that cherry tree, right? Well, what did he try to tell us that? You remember? Did he try to lie about it at first? But then, he said later on, I cannot tell a lie. And he confessed to his dad what he did wrong. Did you know that? Even George Washington, his great president, when he tried to cut down a cherry tree, he lied to his dad about it. He admitted, you can't tell a lie. And you know what? There's sometimes I can tell when my kids are lying, when they start laughing or they start backcracking. <laughs> that would never happen back there. <laughs> or that grin on their faces. But, you know, usually moms and dads can tell when you're lying. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah, because you don't want to tell the short truth. You have to figure out what line you're going to tell. <laughs> right? But you think George Washington's dad was pretty pleased with them for telling a lie? Huh? You think he was? No. Right? When you tell lies to your parents, are they upset with you? Yes. But you guys just told me you guys didn't lie to your mom and dad. <laughs> you ever tell your mom your room's clean and nothing's not? I know. I'm fighting that home. Agree with them? It's a matter of opinion? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What do you do next time you're tempted to tell to hide the truth? What should you do next time you're tempted to hide the truth? Yes? Tell the truth. It may be hard, but I always tell my students it's better to tell me the truth than lie. Come clean. Because usually the consequences when you lie are a lot worse. At least in my experience. Don't you agree? But you know what? God still loves us when we don't tell the truth. He's sad that we didn't tell the truth, but he still forgives us. 
you know what, we all make mistakes. But sometimes we don't always tell the truth. Even President George Washington didn't tell always tell the truth, but he knew it was wrong not to tell the truth, right? So this week, I want you to think about, I cannot tell a lie. We know it's hard, right? Do I know I lied when I was your age? I still kind of bluff with my kids, and they kind of fall, don't fall for it anymore. Okay, so let's put our heads and pray. Dear God, as we go through this week, let us remember that sometimes telling the truth is harder than telling a lie. But even if we do make mess up, you still love us first. In your name we pray. Amen. Praise God and, and, and also 
acknowledging our concerns to God in prayer. We give thanks for where all those places, Harold, we can see God at work, um, healing the folks, and um, let's pray. Lord, we, as we continue this journey, Lord, that you have called us to be upon, we give thanks to you, God, for the fact that we are reminded of many, many times, over and over again, that we do not journey alone. We thank you, God, for those you have put into our lives to be there with us and to be for us. Those who will not leave us be. We thank you, God, for those who pray for us. Even when we can't always pray for ourselves, we know that the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us. But we know, Lord, there's somebody else somewhere praying for me, for all of us. We thank you, Lord, for those who sometimes, Lord, just can't get us off their minds. And Lord, that drives them to just sometimes even ask us, how are you? We give thanks to you, God, for each other. We thank you for answered prayer. We thank you for Harold, Lord, and being cancer-free. We thank you, God, for not only the healing of Harold, Lord, but this, this, uh, that which we all need, Lord, for our own faith. We thank you for Landon, Lord, and the prayers that have been offered up for him. We can see where they too are being answered. But yet we continue to pray for Landon and Harold. We continue to pray, Lord, for all those whom we pray for. Lord, we pray for Jim Bias this morning and Donna. Lord, I want to struggle they have been through and continue to be on a struggle. Yet, God, we pray for strength for them. Pray for Xander this morning that you heal him of you know, this virus and all of those, Lord, who may be afflicted by that. We pray for those who have the flu. Lord, let this pass soon. We pray, God, for those, Lord, who we know of who have lost loved ones this week. May you be their strength and their comfort. We pray for our church. Lord, continue, Lord, during this time to give us the wisdom that we need. Help us to be patient. Help us, Lord, to listen. And help us, Lord, to be obedient to how you would lead us. Lord, we have many names on our hearts of those we love, hear us now as we call them out to you. Andy and Nelda. Steve Snarr and John Keezer. Andy Rodman. B. Workman. Anna Halstead. Cameron. In your mercy, Lord, hear and receive our prayers. And now, again, help us to pray the prayer that our Lord taught his disciples for me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, the glory, and the Amen. The ushers be. Here today, 
with all the gifts that we offer, Lord, from ourselves. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. 
passage, but parts of it. Jesus is saying this. You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not murder. And anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to his brother, Raka, is answerable to the Sanhedrin. But anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother. Then come and offer your gift. Then Jesus says, You have heard that it was said, Do not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away, it is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown in hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. Then Jesus said, It has been said, Anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. But I tell you, Anyone who divorces his wife except for marital unfaithfulness causes her to become an adulteress. Anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. And it goes on and on. You've heard it said. But I say to you, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks. Oftentimes, when preparing a sermon or while um, you know, getting ready to deliver it, I listen for confirmation from God as to whether or not the sermon that I'm getting ready to deliver is the right one or not. You have to listen sometimes. Sometimes God just makes it very clear to you that yes, that which you're about to say, there is no doubt in your mind is directly from God, however that all comes. Well, I'm pleased to announce to you this morning that this very morning, this very morning before I came here, Jack, I got confirmation. Yes, I did. As I went to McDonald's to eat breakfast. There I was, bless, bless my heart, there I was, Jerry, eating biscuits and gravy. Or as they call it, McDonald's gravy biscuits. I don't know, it's, it's not that way around. Eating my biscuits and gravy, sitting down to eat. There were two guys there across the way having a, a, a discussion that you'll normally hear at McDonald's, something like that. I was sitting there, and I wasn't eavesdropping. They were speaking loud enough for me to hear. And one of them clearly said, The Bible said, Thou shalt not kill. Oh, well, there you go. That's my, that's my sermon this morning. They were talking, and he went on to tell what else the Bible said. I said, Clarification for me. Right there it was. Talking about the very lesson that I'm going to preach on this morning. Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount says a lot. He talks there about a lot of things and that which we've been looking at the last couple of weeks and we'll conclude today. There's a whole lot we could say, but we're going to move on next week. By the way, next week is Transfiguration Sunday. We're making our way for the season of Lent and towards the cross and that towards the, the tomb for Easter Day. Um, we discovered in this lesson, this wonderful lesson that Jesus teaches here in Matthew, that Jesus called his hearers to task. If you remember, while looking at this, Jesus uses the word you a lot. In the Gospel of John, in chapter 8, verse 12, there Jesus says, I am the light of the world, for instance, in John, it's all about Jesus and all about Jesus really being God, come to earth. But in Matthew, he doesn't say, I am the light of the world. He looks at his ears and says, you are the light of the world. It's been discovered that the word you is used 
often in both plural and singular texts or pat on way. Uh, therefore, he's not just saying you individually, but all, all who hear, everyone, you. Uh, so again, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. Matthew is the only gospel of the four that, you may know this, I've said it already, that uses the word church. Only time we find the word church in the gospels is in Matthew's gospel. Matthew's gospel is written with the church in mind. Jesus seems to be saying all the way through uh, Matthew's gospel that we, the church, are to be about God's business. It's not just all about what God is doing. But do we ever ask, what is it that we are doing on behalf of God? What are we doing for God? Are we doing what God wants us to do? Matthew seems to be concerned with that. Are we being with being the person who God wants us to be? Matthew seems to be concerned with that. Later on in this gospel, we won't preach on it uh, later on, um, Matthew then uh, has Jesus teaching about prayer. And not just teaching the Lord's prayer, but he does that. But Matthew, or, or Jesus and Matthew is teaching on how to pray. He's teaching about giving to the needy. How to do it, how not to do it. In Matthew's account, Jesus is teaching on fasting. And in those passages, Jesus uses a word that we never like being called. It's a strong word Jesus uses there. The word is hypocrite. He uses that word there. The word in its true meaning has to do with an actor or someone wearing a mask. But Jesus uses that word there. Jesus is basically saying to us, don't be one. And this is how you can avoid being one. So Jesus tells us there, when you give to the needy, don't worry about the whole world knowing it. He says, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Now I think that if we could think for a moment and, and just imagine Jesus saying this to us today and that is how it would be written to us today in our world today so that our world could better understand it. Probably what Jesus would say to us today is don't put it on Facebook. <laughs> I think that's what we hear Jesus saying. No need, no need to go right straight to the... Guess what I just did? Oh, and a wonderful thing. How many likes can I get? People don't do that. I don't do that. I'm just making this up. All right? I just wonder if that's not what Jesus would say. He also says when you pray, do it in secret. Don't try to be seen doing it. Don't use long words to impress God. And for goodness sake, keep it short. <laughs> I'm glad none of you ever have said that about anything about the service here. Right, Chad? No respect. <laughs> Little age, you have any idea? You know what we're talking about when we do that? Uh, you don't do it. Oh, goodness. Uh, I think before I leave here, Jack, I'm going to have to give a whole lesson, a history lesson on all the people Jesus correctly, Gary, 
Jesus is also suggesting there, we shouldn't watch the halftime half show at the Super Bowl. I just think he goes too far on what some of the things he says. When Jesus says the things that Jesus says, I discovered that we have gotten pretty good over the years of trying to explain away what it is Jesus is saying. Uh, for instance, well, let me back up. We sometimes try to explain away or try to explain away what Jesus is saying so that we can better live with what Jesus is saying to us. That may be true, huh? We want to be able to be able to live with what Jesus is saying to us. When Jesus says, we sometimes say, well, you know, when Jesus says, uh, or the Bible said, do not murder or do not kill. Uh, well, what, what is really being said there, right? What I'm really hearing said there, you know, uh, and are simply just talking about murder. It does not mean that we can't, and then we begin to make exclusions to the whole thing. Then when it comes to that part about being angry with one's brother, now this causes us to be in danger of judgment if we are angry with our brother. Well, you see, uh, what that's really saying is, uh, it's really talking about, uh, because we know the Greek words and all that, it's really talking about the anger that brews within, and if you don't get it, don't deal with it, it's just going to get out, it's going to be like a wildfire spreading. That's what it really, it doesn't really mean that, and so forth. And when he's talking about adultery, well, you see, he's talking about being so infatuated with someone who isn't one's spouse, and this leads the person to commit the act of. That's what Jesus is saying. Jesus, we sometimes declare, isn't necessarily talking about looking. After all, Jesus knows us. He knows how we're made, and Jesus surely therefore knows that we're all human. And every so often, you know, the eye kind of gets distracted and so forth. And, and even, even President Jimmy Carter, right? Proof, proof of it. And there's a Jimmy Carter, uh, a wholesome Jimmy, who taught Sunday school class in Georgia, brought his own mama to the White House, right? Who loved Miss Roslyn like no man has ever loved his wife. Even he admitted that he himself has lusted after a woman in his heart, therefore he committed adultery. And President Jimmy couldn't keep him doing it. How can we? God knows. Only oh, God knows us. And when it comes to divorce, well, you see what Jesus was really meaning there. Well, we, you know, we've got to look at what the Bible says. After all, we say, and we say things like the Old Testament declares that a man uh, could divorce his wife even if she did any little thing to displease him. Uh, meaning that, the Bible even says in the Old Testament, that if she burnt the meat, she burnt supper. She could be out. He can say to her, get you out of here. Right? I am divorcing you. You can't cook any better than that. That is all they needed to go on. And we oftentimes make what Jesus is saying easier for us to live with. But what is Jesus really doing? Is Jesus saying one thing, but really, truly talking about something else? Is Jesus really concerned with how easy this is for us to live by? Or is Jesus concerned with us living right? Being in right relationship with God and one another. What is Jesus truly, really saying when he says, he says, if you're even angry with someone and you call that someone fool, if you even look at someone with lust in your heart, if it's so easy to say, get you out of here, you burnt supper, uh, and therefore go, what is Jesus really saying to us? 
Well, it says a whole lot more than that. What Jesus is saying there is that when you begin to look at someone as being, as being someone or something, someone or something other than a valued person in the eyes of God, when we begin to see someone as being other than and being something else, then it becomes easier for us. It becomes easier for us to justify. It's kind of like the old rape scenario. Well, if they did not wear certain clothes, then therefore, you know what it's saying about the clothes they wear. Jesus, folks, isn't saying that here. He's not saying that at all. He is not saying, well, you know what? Um, um, well, if they do this, then therefore they deserve this. That's not what he's saying here. Jesus is challenging us to look at those folks around us. Not as objects. Not as something or somebody lower than. Where we can justify that which God has not justified. He is calling us to see others. No matter where they are, where they come from, how they do things, how different than us they are, what we like about them, what we don't like about them, he is reminding us, folks, that all people are valuable. All people are precious in the eyes of God. When it comes to divorce in this situation, Jesus is reminding them of what the Old Testament said. But the problem was, if you just say to her, this is all about her, Valerie, right? Go, get out of here. The meat is overcooked. I want it rare. It's well done. Get out. You can't cook any better than that. You're divorced. That was as easy as it was. But it causes her to be in a situation called survival. It causes her to be in a predicament where in life the only way she could survive is to go to another. Jesus is challenging us here to be mindful of all human life. Not to look at someone again as an object where we can justify our actions. But it's not just calling upon us to be passive. He's saying to us, even in this scripture, Thou shalt not commit adultery or, or murder, or even have anger in your heart. He goes further than that. Calling on the church even to take action. He is saying that if you go to the altar to offer your gift, and you're there to worship God, and all of a sudden you remember while at the altar you remember, oh, oh my goodness, you know, I, I've been thinking about whatever it may be. I've been thinking about how things went down the other day. And I've been thinking about, the, I know the hurt that I feel, but I've also been thinking about the hurt that they may feel. Things are good between us. Jesus says, hey, stop what you're doing. Leave right then and there. God won't mind. God is okay if we abruptly uh, exit worship to go and handle the broken relationship between me or whoever it may be to mend that relationship. But what Jesus is saying here, there's nothing more important at that very moment. What Jesus is saying here, right relationship with God. Oh my goodness. Is that what Jesus is saying here? A right relationship with God depends on right relationship with one another. Right relationship with God depends on right relationship with one another. What Jesus is saying to us today too we don't really need for the scripture to say anything that 
the scripture doesn't already say to us. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us sing today page 467.